Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy and welcome back to another episode of Symphonic Rain. So before we jump in, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because it would mean the whole world to me and after this video, if you like it, hit that like button too. Alright, let's jump in. Oh, what happened to your previous form? I will have to withdraw my approval at this rate. I see. Enough for today. Go home and think things over. Until then, I will put my decision on about your partner on hold. Huh? Is something troubling you? Until you solve it, my decision is on hold. Oh, okay. Make up your mind before school starts again next year. We're finished for today. Got it. This was an example of Miss Cordell's kindness. Grateful, I packed up my foretell and went outside. I ha er, it hadn't even been 30 minutes since the lesson started. Not feeling like going to the cafeteria, I decided to return to my apartment. Huh? huh? What's wrong, Chris? Forney looked surprised at seeing me come home before noon. There was no towel at the front door, so I had to get one myself. Did something happen? I guess. You don't look too well. There's that too, I guess. It seemed my body was still pretty tired from yesterday. Still, it wasn't that bad when I performed in front of Miss Cordell. Then it's probably best if you lie down and rest for today, Forney said kindly with some worry in her voice. I was incredibly grateful toward her for uh, telling me without demanding a reason. Normally, she would press me to no end, but at times like these, Forney was always kind. Thanks. Don't mind it, now hurry up and sleep! Okay. I quickly changed and dropped onto my bed. I still had many things to think about, but sleep was quick to overcome me. <sighs> I emitted yet another sigh, and Forney cast her eyes on me with a concerned expression. I was playing my foretell to distract myself from my worries, but I couldn't get into it and ended up even more depressed as a result. Hey Chris, how about taking a break? I'm not sure. You made a formal appointment, right? Though, er, though, it's, er, though I think it's rather dumb that you didn't agree on time beforehand. I had nothing to say in response. Even though it was Saturday, the day Lise and I agreed to practice in my room, she had yet to show up. I cleaned up my room immediately upon awakening. That helped me, or that helped get things off my mind. But in the afternoon, the time I was expecting Lise to arrive, she never showed up. Maybe she had some urgent business to attend to. She might still come, you know. True. And in order to, to prevent any mishaps in the event Lise does show up, I put my hands on the back of the keyboard. Or back on the keyboard. Stop! You need a break right now! I acknowledge your concern, but she's coming all the way to my room after all. So you want to let her down by putting on a lackluster performance? It could go either way, right? Even assuming it well, or that it went well, you still need to rest and have a bite to eat in order to stay healthy, you know. You'll still have enough time to practice afterward, won't you? Fine. Now that she mentioned it, I actually was a bit hungry. I had been sitting behind my foretell all afternoon, awaiting Elise's arrival. She might show up while I'm in the middle of eating lunch. Regardless of whether she was simply late or couldn't come, I was sure she had a good reason. Remembering the foodstuffs I had left in the kitchen, I got up from my seat. How about doing an ensemble with me instead? I'll think about it. I silently prayed that I wouldn't have to compromise like that. She didn't come. Oh no. Regardless of my awareness, time had been passing by at a steady pace. I was so lost in thought about Lise and Arietta that a full day had gone by before I even realized it. Chris, are you okay? Yeah, I'm not sick or anything, I replied, still laying in bed. Yesterday, Lisa was supposed to come here. Or Lise. I had been waiting in this room all day, anticipating her arrival. 
Of course, Forney was with me, so it wasn't like I was completely alone. Truth be told, I kind of foresaw this outcome. Since Grave had found out about us, he might have confer or confined her at her er confined her at home. Since I had no clue where she lived, I had no way of contacting her. I could do nothing but wait and let time or let the time flow by. If there was one silver lining, it would be that I had or that I had been given more than enough time to think about Arietta. Then how about getting up and having lunch or something? Is it that late already? It's already 2.30! You woke up in the morning and have been sulking in bed ever since! We- or was being stood up by Lise really that much of a shock to you? Whatever. Forney obviously knew Lise was supposed to show up yesterday. While she didn't have such a sharp tongue then, she probably couldn't bear to look at my pitiful figure anymore. Or perhaps she was just trying to cheer me up. Either way, her reaction was somewhat natural, considering I had yet to tell her about Grave. Or about Arietta, for that matter. Ah, oh, jeez. Remember, we're doing an ensemble tonight, so you'd better get back in shape before then. Yeah, yeah. Forney was back to her usual self, which helped me relax. But my mind soon wandered back to Lise and Arietta. The anxiety about Lise not showing up yesterday... And on the opposite side of the spectrum, my feelings of regret toward Arietta. Normally, those would be two separate issues, but now they were so intricately intertwined that it was starting to make me feel sick. My feelings toward Lise had slowly seeped their way into my heart before I knew it, which probably explained why Miss Cordell's words had left such a big impression on me. But the more I thought about it, the more my mind started to wander towards Lise, and the more the or the more my chest cringed in pain. Even now, my feelings toward Arietta haven't changed. But on the other hand, Miss Cordell's words also made me realize that I was falling in love with Lise. But what if Lise thought nothing of me? Now I was just trying to evade responsibility. But what did it matter? The fact that I was being unfaithful to Ari remained. And while this was only happening in my mind, it warranted some serious contemplation. A little before dark, I finally got up out of bed and had a belated lunch. At this rate, I probably wouldn't have a need for dinner anymore. Winter vacation started yesterday, so I could just eat uh, eat something whenever I got hungry. If I, or if I wasn't hungry, I didn't have to eat. Simple as that. I took care of my laundry, then went to the mailbox to pick up Ari's letter. The letter was sealed in a pretty envelope, as usual. I opened it and read the contents. Dear Chris, is the rain still falling over there? Over here, the skies are clear as usual. Today was Natalie for you. Did you go to church to pray? Up until last year, we had been able to go together, so now that I'm not there, I am a bit worried. Knowing you, you probably didn't go in the morning. Perhaps you went around noon? I will be attending some around the same time, so I hope our prayers manage to reach each other. This will be the last letter of the year, but then next year's letter will arrive soon enough. Lately, I have been unable to stop thinking about the moment of, or of our reunion. Whoopsie. I did not mean to press that. <laughs> Wondering whether you changed since we haven't seen each other uh, this year. Wondering whether you have become a better musician now that you have studied at a musical institute for years. I want to hear you play the foretell again. I want to hear you play so badly that it's making me cry. Come to think of it, did you pick someone other than Torto for the graduation performance? I did not expect that, but if it was your own or but if it was your own decision, then I believe it's for the best. Since we are living so far apart, a lot of things may have changed by the time this letter reaches you, but even so, there is one thing I am convinced of. Chris, you should do whatever you feel is right, no matter what that may be. I am me, and you are you. Chris, if you will walk the path you have laid out for yourself, then no matter the outcome, I will accept it. So, should you ever lose your way, think about what I have said. Chris, do whatever you feel is right. 
That is my one and only true desire. Well then, see you next year. Arietta. I was unable to make or to reply to the letter right away. Do whatever you feel is right. Ari wrote that without knowing what I was going through right now. If she did know, would she try to stop me? Or would she say the same thing with a smile on her face? But I didn't even know what the right thing to do was. I don't want to abandon what I had with Lise. Whatever I envi or whenever I envisioned her in my mind, singing all alone, that conviction only grew stronger. But I didn't get the feeling that even that was the right approach. I wasn't about to abandon Arietta either. But in the end, I probably had to choose one or the other. Right now, this was merely a prediction, but it was likely to become reality soon enough. I became interested in Lise, and when I pr uh, played my foretell for her, I intricately laced the standards of a love song into my notes. The fact alone, or that fact alone, definitely sufficed to indicate that I was attracted to her. And the more I became aware of that, the larger Lise's presence grew in my heart. I carefully slipped Ari's letter back into the envelope and left it on my desk, void of a reply for now. My mind was getting unstable whenever Lise came up. I wondered where she was or where she was right now and what she was doing. Grave was an excellent musician but also incredibly strict. I had become quite painfully aware of that fact after attending two of his lectures. Foretellers who take that much pride in their heritage would never, ever allow their daughters to walk a different path in life. Lise was probably being forced to continue practicing the foretell, not having the courage to tell him she would prefer to sing. Words I had heard long ago suddenly resounded clearly in my mind. Is it okay for me to sing? Upon hearing her, or upon asking her what she meant by that, she immediately cast the subject aside, so I didn't realize it at the time. I had always been in the dark about the significance of those words, but now I knew which was why I desperately wanted to know where she was and what she was doing. Lise. I surveyed my surroundings. I was afraid Forney had heard my unconscious muttering. However, even though I fully expected her to notice the letter had arrived, I couldn't spot her anywhere. Okay then, after Forney appears and calls out to me. I made up a meaningless, a meaningless rule in my head and decided to hold off on writing a reply until it, or until it triggered. I laid down in my bed, just waiting for time to pass by. Huh? Someone was knocking on the door. Who could it be at a time like this? On a day like this? I couldn't think of anyone other than Torta, but I silently hoped it was Lise. I had already changed into my clothes when I went to pick up the letters, so I went straight for the entrance and opened the door. Sorry for the wait. Uh, um... Lise! At that moment, unconsciously, I f or a faint blush came to my cheeks. Relief. No. Delight was probably a better description. More accurate words to express what I was feeling came, or came to mind, but I drove those thoughts out for now. Um, sorry for not coming yesterday. Uh, it's no problem. I injured my foot, which is why I had to stay in bed. Huh? You injured your foot? Lise seemed to be limping a bit. After her words had finally sunk in, I led her into my room by hand. Are you okay? Did you walk all the way out here? Uh, yes, but I'm okay. I noticed that Lise was drenched, and I wondered just how much time it had taken for her to get here. Wait a sec, I'll get a towel for you. I didn't care about the floor getting wet. I had her sit down on a chair and went to fetch a towel. Here, dry your hair with this. Oh, okay. Lise nodded with a startled expression, perhaps awed by my commanding tone. I left a few dry towels on the table, then went to the kitchen to prepare a warm drink. Lise had been holding a box of sorts behind her back, which she now placed on the table in order to pick up the towel. Um, thank you very much. Don't mind that. Hurry up and dry yourself off. I was wondering about the box, but suppressed my curiosity and boiled some water instead. While the water was heating up, I went back to Lise. 
So, how did you hurt your foot? Uh, it's nothing serious. I had a misstep on the staircase. Lise took off her shoe, revealing a swollen area on her foot, visible from even underneath her socks. A bandage of sorts was tightly wrapped around it. It's bandaged? Yes, but it's just for st er, but just for stabilization. It's not as bad as it looks. But you really didn't have to push yourself like this to come here today. But but we made a promise after all. I thought you might have been worried. Well, I was worried, but if you were injured, you should have come after it healed. B but from tomorrow until classes start again next year, I have other engagements, so I wouldn't have been able to come here. I... I see. Even so, you shouldn't push yourself. Th thank you. Uh, anyway, hold on a sec. I went back into the kitchen and made a cafe la- or a- yeah, cafe latte with the boiling water. The milk was still cold, but I figured it would be a little easier for Lise to drink if the coffee was lukewarm, so I poured it in right away. I just had to warm her body up for now. Sorry for the wait. Please drink this. Thank you. I sat down across from her and waited for her to calm down. Actually, I might have been the one who had to- or I might have been the one who had to calm down. In any case, I decided not to speak to her until we finish our coffee. That was delicious! Without breaking our mutual gaze, Lise placed the cup on the desk. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I replied after downing the remains of my own. By now, I had calmed down considerably as well. But are you sure your foot is alright? Yes, I was able to walk all the way here after all. Well, that's good to hear. I'm really sorry about yesterday. Never mind that, but did you come all the way here just to tell me that? Well, that and one other thing. What is it? Um, as apology, I, uh, bought some cake, so shall we have some together? Cake? Yes, the bakery I bought it for, or bought it at is known to be pretty good. It's in that box? Yes. Did you eat yet? Um, if you're not hungry, then it's okay. To tell you the truth, I didn't have dinner yet, so this is just what I needed. Really? But it's already past ten. Wow, it's that late already? You didn't notice? I was asleep. <laughs> so that's why your hair is messy. Lise snickered playfully. When she wasn't singing, it was a rare sight to, uh, for Lise to laugh like this. I felt genuinely happy, even if she was making fun of me. Shall I make some tea? I'm sure you already had dinner a while ago, right? Y yes So while I prepare the tea, could you go ahead and slice the cake? Sure. I fetched some plates and a knife from the kitchen and handed them to Lise. Um, like this? I could hear Lise's soft voice behind me. Wondering what she was doing, I turned around and spotted her gripping the knife in a rather risky fashion, ready to slice her way into the cin er, the cylinder-shaped cake. Lise? I, er, a little worried, I called out to her, but she was so fixated on going about her business that she didn't even hear me. It's just, her and just slice like this. She was a girl, after all, so I figured she would be alright. I went back into the kitchen, but then... On the verge of tears, Lise held out the plate with a piece of cake on top. I am sorry. Th that's okay. Maybe her hands had been shaking, as the cake had, come, or had become a complete mess. The spongy part had been completely smashed. You messed up? I- I'm sorry. In all honesty, I've never done this before. Cutting a cake? Y yes <laughs> Then you should have told me so. But- but- I always cook for myself, so I'm skilled with knives. Could it be that you've never held a knife before? That's right. I was only half serious, but Lise nodded in confirmation, embarrassed. I- I see. In that case, it's actually pretty good considering it's your first time. It was a pretty hollow compliment, which I figured she'd see through right away. However, much to my surprise, she seemed unable to hide her joy and broke out a big smile. R really? Sh sure. 
Come to think of it, she was the daughter of a high-class family. She never really come across that way to me, but seeing her get so happy about this, I could suddenly picture it perfectly. Any er, anyway, how about we have some? I yes Still smiling, Lise carried the first piece of cake to her mouth. Looking more closely, it appeared the, uh, the cake on Lise's plate was even more of a hack job than the one on my own. The cake had perfectly collapsed sideways, causing pretty much all of the cream to get er, to get stuck to the plate. She was scraping it off with her fork and eating it, but it just didn't look very tasty to me. Does it taste good? Yes, very. Y yeah, of course it does. When I stopped and thought about it, the taste obviously wouldn't change. Once, I, or once put in your mouth, it was all the same, no matter how bad it looked. Yeah, it's delicious. Thanks to that epiphany, I was able to enjoy the cake normally. More importantly, the fact that I was able to be with Lise and that I got to see her happier than ever before... Oh. I thought there was more to that that it wasn't showing. Sorry. <laughs> Might just have been uh, what was making me truly happy right now. But deep inside, I was apologizing for my unfaithfulness that stemmed from such thoughts, both to Lise and to Arietta. But before Lise's smile had a chance to fade, I retrieved my own as well. Hey, there's cream on your face. It had been there from the start, but I didn't feel like mentioning it until now. I told the panicking girl to stay still and scooped it up with my finger. Wondering what to do with the cream for a second, I decided to de er, uh, deposit it into my own mouth. I figured putting it in Lise's mouth would be a bit too embarrassing, but this was pretty embarrassing in itself. W what? N nothing. Lise stammered and went back to eating her cake. I felt her gaze on, er, on me at times, and during the intervals where she averted her eyes, I spent the opportunity gazing at her. Oh, they're so in love. Well then, thank you for today. No, thank you. The cake was delicious. Um, then I suppose I'll... I'll walk you home. N no it's pretty far. All the reason, or all the more reason to. But... I'm worried about your foot. If I go with you, I could give you a hand if needed, and I won't have to be concerned. That may have been a little mean. While it was true that I was worried, I knew she wouldn't be able to refuse after I said that to her. She'd limped all the way here for that very reason, after all. Let's buy an umbrella in town. Y yes Lise agreed reluctantly. Um, thank you very much. It had already been past ten when Lise came to my apartment. It wasn't yet past midnight. Yet it was very late nonetheless. Is it alright for you to come home at a time like this? Huh? The, the time? It's uh, still fine, I think. Sifting between the streets most sheltered from the rain, we were walking in the direction of the main street. You think? What's wrong? Um, actually, I slipped out without any- or without telling anyone beforehand. Are you going to be okay? As long as I'm not caught, I'll be fine, I think. Well, naturally, but... We walked onto the main street and quickly bought an umbrella, but it didn't seem like we would get a chance to use it just yet. From my house to here, and probably from the entrance to the new town to Lise's house, the roads generally weren't roofed. So, since there wasn't much need to raise an umbrella until we reached the new town, I just let it dangle from my hand as we walked. Do you often slip out of your house like this? N no this is the first time. They'll get upset if they find out, right? Well, but if they don't, there won't be a problem. Sorry for having you do such a risky thing. N no it's okay! I did it because I wanted to. I see. Lise's tone was firm. Her cheeks then reddened a bit. With that, I was convinced. It wasn't one-sided. Lise liked me as well. 
Of course, since she never objected to performing ensembles with me to this point, it was clear she didn't hate me. But her feelings for me were, uh, were apparent. She wasn't very good at hiding even that. I could no longer pretend to, or not to notice it. Nor could I pretend not to realize that Lise now had, or held a bigger place in my heart than Arietta. Uh, um, I'll be fine from here on. Why do you say that? Because it's already really late. I'm here with you because it's late. But, let me walk you to your house. If I don't, I really will get worried. Lise was taking large steps, a bit slowly, as it still seemed difficult for her to walk with her foot bandaged like that. I noticed this as I sometimes had to help her get past even the slightest of elevations in the road. But, don't worry about me. Uh, okay. And so we resumed our excursion. For the first time since I came to this town, I had a good use for an umbrella. It's over here. Lise shot me an upward glance as though checking out my reaction. I sort of understood what she was trying to convey. A mere glance at the extravagant mansion before us was enough to understand. The buildings in this district, deep inside the new town, were all large and exquisitely, uh, exquisitely built. And this building, apparently Lise's house, stood out even among those. I couldn't believe my eyes. But when I thought of, or of it as Graves' house, it became a bit easier to swallow. It seemed I hadn't understood the relationship between Lise and Grave as well as I had thought. Even though I pretended to understand uh, when it was explained to me, now that I was confronted with reality, I couldn't help but feel uncomfortable. Perhaps it, or I'd be able to get over it. I pondered on a more positive note, then turned back to Lise. Um, I'm sorry. About what? My father. You knew about him, didn't you? Yeah, I heard all about him, from that same friend that told me you were being a foretellist, or about you being a foretellist. I really didn't mean to hide it. Oh, don't worry about that. More importantly, if you knew that I was aware, then... Father told me about it. So, what did you... But I want to sing. Lise trembled as though frightened by something that continued in a distinct tone. I love singing. I know. Is it okay for me to sing? Yeah. Really? Yeah, of course. That's your right. If you really want to sing, then you should. Chris Senpai, thank you so much. Let's work hard together from now on as... Lise's face turned a shade of red before clearly stating, As partners. Thank you, Lise. I look forward to performing with you. I returned Lise's exaggerated bow with a modest bow of my own. Telling her that she shouldn't get let, I forced the umbrella on her and watched her leave. In the end, I didn't find out the nature of the engagements she had uh, starting tomorrow. By now, my feelings were pretty much in order. I still had to write my letter to Arietta today. A cruel letter she would surely rather not receive. Do what I feel is right. And that very moment I decided... The right thing for me to do was to make Lise happy. I wasn't going to have Let's Break Up be the letter subject, but the contents would no doubt hurt Ari's feelings. Even so, I was unable to lie to her. With the last bit of faith or faithfulness I had left in me, I had to tell her the truth. Uh, sorry. I awoke naturally into a calm morning. The chilly air of the deathly silent room grazed across my face. I had yet to send the letter to Ari I wrote yesterday. It isn't too late. So, uh, so went a voice in my head. But I could no longer turn back. Please do whatever you feel is right. Ari did write that in her letter. No matter what that may be. Those words were my excuse. What kind of face is that to be making this early in the morning? Good morning. 
Good morning! How about an answer to my question? I wouldn't know. Haven't looked in the mirror. Forney uh, glided down next to my pillow and rolled her eyes at me. You already made up your mind, haven't you? No point in moping around about it anymore. I know. I told Forney the entire story yesterday. There was no point in keeping it from her, especially since Lise would probably be coming here often after school starts again next year. I told her everything about Ari as well. Knowing how much Forney liked Torta and Ari, I had expected her to get extremely upset. But Forney told me exactly the same thing as Ari did in her letter. You should just do what you feel is the right thing to do. She then flashed her eyes smile. Then, what about after that? After that? I haven't thought about it yet. It's a holiday, so I'll figure I'll just take it easy. What? You're terrible, Chris. Why? You didn't play with me yesterday. I had to endure it while Lisa was here during the day, and we ended up spending all night talking. Sorry. There was a hint of anger in Forney's voice, but I knew she wasn't genuinely upset. Her serious expression as she listened to my story yesterday was still fresh in my mind. This was probably Forney's way of showing her support. In fact, her words helped me cheer right up. Don't apologize! Isn't there, is, or isn't there something else you should say? Like what? Are you still sleeping? Maybe. I'm not sure what you're getting at here. I jokingly replied, feigning ignorance. What? Acting all surprised isn't going to clue me in. Let me sing! Oh, is that all? Is that all? It might not mean anything to you, but... Sorry, sorry. I just mean that if that's all, then sure, we could play. Really? Are you doubting me? Because normally we always do it on Sunday evenings. Yesterday was the first time we didn't. It occurred to me that this may actually be really important to Forney. Aside from being supportive of me, some of her feelings might have been genuine. True. For no reason in particular, I was reminded of Ari. Forney only had me right now. All she could do by herself was gaze out the window or sing. For everything else, she was dependent on me. I could sing along because, or she could sing along because I played the foretell for her, and she was able to go outside because I brought her along. I think I may have undervalued how important these things really were to her. Sorry, let's play all through the day. Huh? Really? We could start right away. I don't have anyone to practice with right now anyway. If you did, you'd ignore me? No, I'd still play with you. Honest. Very well then. Thanks. W what's with the serious face? Would you rather I say it with a non-serious face? N no. <laughs> well, never mind. I'm going to send the letter first. Be right back. Okay. <laughs> Feels like I haven't done this in ages. Uh, do I detect a trace of a sprite here? It's only been a day longer than usual. Yeah, I'm being... Er, sorry, spite. <laughs> yeah, I'm being spiteful because you totally forgot about me. All right, already I'm starting, okay? Okay! Since I've been focusing on Lisa's piece lately, I'd expected my skills to have relapsed, or relapsed, but to my own surprise, my fingers moved smoothly, but the first note sounded, whoops, uh, sounded wonderful. Perhaps it was the fruit of Graves' lectures. It was hard for me to admit, but his wit and talent for teaching were undeniable. As usual, Forney used her whole body to absorb herself in the notes, before absorbing, absorbing herself even further by singing the first verses. Despite her small frame, she produced a volume not unlike that of a regular human being, with notes so clear it was as though they penetrated my eardrums. Her wings were flapping loosely to the rhythm. She was one with the music, her song appearing to manifest from inside her. Come to think of it, due to last week's circumstances, I never did get to perform with Lise. 
It had been a while since I last felt this almost peculiar sense of unity. In the process, I did a lot of thinking about Forney and Lise. Ah! Uh, what's wrong? Chris, your thoughts are elsewhere right now, aren't they? My body and thought uh, processes were still in disarray due to her suddenly stopping. What? It went really well. Then you suddenly started playing false notes. I I was? You were thinking about something else, weren't you? Uh, well, it happens. Uh, I'm getting tired of this. I'm sorry. Upon hearing me apologize, Forney didn't get angry, but instead Timely murmured. Don't apologize. Why not? Can't you see I'm just being selfish? What are you talking about? Just... Forney? Putting as much kindness into my voice as I could, I continued. Idiot. W what? I said you were an idiot. I spontaneously broke a smile. I then gently flicked her on the forehead, bringing her... Or bringing her tottering on her feet. You're the idiot! Yeah, you're right. Take it back! I won't. Idiot! Yeah, idiot. Uh, that was directed at me, wasn't it? No, it was directed at the both of us. Ugh. Anyway, let's forget about it. Let's try again. I won't let my mind wander this time. Really? Yeah, I promise. Okay then, I guess. Thanks. I stroked her restlessly flapping wings with my fingers and turned back to my foretell. The few days until the new year would normally pass by rather quietly. But it might get a little noisy this year around, listening to the tiny fairy song and what might have been our last few months together. All the while, uh, wantonly play or playing at my beloved foretell. I came to the realization that this might just be my way of atoning. I wanted to dedicate the time I couldn't spend with Lise to someone else. But all I could do was dedicate it to Forney, as the one person I wanted to apologize to most was out of reach. Perhaps this was pointless. But I continued to play for Forney, believing there was a point to it and trusting the little time I had left to this tiny sprite of music. Without thinking much of it, I awoke into a new year. Since I had no need to go out, I turned over in my bed again, only to encounter Forney standing next to my pillow. Good morning! Morning. What day is it today, I wonder? New Year's, I'd venture. Good night. <laughs> exactly! Today's the first of the- Hey! I'm still sleepy. I had managed to catch a glimpse of the clock before I closed my eyes again. It was still before noon. Although I wasn't so sleepy as to be unable to get up, I still had little reason to. You'll get it later. <laughs> I'm scared already. Uh, at, at least open your eyes! Why? Look people in the eye when you're talking to them! Strictly speaking, Forney wasn't a person, but I'd feel bad pointing that out to her. You're right. <sighs> Very well. I don't have anywhere I need to go today. Nowhere? It was, er, it was ridiculously crowded yesterday. It probably won't be much better today. What about shopping? I did that last year. Nothing to do? I just want to spend my time in peace. Then let's sing today! We've been doing that every day lately, you know? Let's take a break for once. Huh, that's not what you promised! What about this promise of last year? Hey! Just kidding. I'm still sleepy, so let's do it tonight or something. Today's Sunday. We always perform in the evening on Sundays, don't we? Then it'll be just like usual. Nothing wrong with the usual. Today's Sunday. Whether it's New Year's or not doesn't matter. Tonight? Yeah. Promise? Yeah, I promise. Cheapskate? I guess I am. 
At least deny it! If I did, you would trick me into playing right now, wouldn't you? Oh, I could have I could have done that! You didn't even realize it, huh? Anyway, I won't change my mind. Wait until tonight. <sighs> oh well. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Shortly after closing my eyes, I heard Forney clapping her feet together in boredom next to my pillow. As I dozed off to that sound, a beautiful melody began to flow from Forney's mouth. I wondered if she had heard the song before. It felt incredibly familiar. I must have heard it somewhere before. Or maybe not. After gently rocking on the border of dream and reality for a while, I eventually slipped back into slumber. Forney? As I woke up again, I wondered whether Forney was still in the same spot and called out to her. After a short pause, an answer came. Coming! One second! Forney glided down to my bed from the desk a little further away. Good morning! What are you talking about? It's already pa way past morning. I know! <laughs> Don't get mad. Shall we do our ensemble? You're trying to avoid the issue! Of course I am. Jeez! Before starting the ensemble, I unconsciously went out the fr uh, for the front door and slipped out. Even though I figured there was no way a letter would come, I went and opened the mailbox automatically. However, there was a familiar envelope inside. I picked it up and verified the address. Arietta Fine. The familiar handwriting was like a dagger to the chest. Where did you go? You surprised me going out without a word like that. Forney didn't mention the letter at all. Maybe she was being thoughtful of me. But no matter how much I'd like to forget, I couldn't escape the reality this letter uh, wrote. Is that a letter from Ari? Yeah. In that case, I'll disappear for a while. Before I could answer, Forney had vanished. Forney! The room suddenly felt a lot more spacious after the disappearance of the noisy fairy. Perhaps the guilt and anxiety in my heart made me feel afraid to be alone. Hurry up and read it! I'm waiting! Huh? I've been waiting since this morning, you know. Y yeah, I understand. Good. Forney. She probably got upset like that for my sake. And she left me alone again for the same reason. It was Forney's way of being kind to me. I mentally swore that I would do the ensemble with Forney as soon as I finished reading the letter. It might have been me who truly needed it right now. Dear Chris, I read your previous letter. The only thing I could say right now is thank you for telling me the truth. If you had tried to lie your way around it with sweet words, I might have fallen for it. I am naive like that after all. I am not trying to be sarcastic either. This is how I truly feel. It looks like you were aware of that kindness of a lie would only end up hurting the other party more. Which is why I was able to accept this outcome and write you this letter. It is difficult to say goodbye, but I will be able to forget in due time. Chris, please forget about me quickly. I will try my best to forget you as quickly as possible as well. So Chris, please do whatever you feel is right. Arietta I gingerly sealed the letter back into its envelope and stored it in the drawer. I wouldn't be writing a reply to this. It wasn't what Ari would or it wasn't what Ari would want, and I didn't have anything left to say. Please forget about me quickly. I will try my best to forget about you as quickly as possible as well. Finished? Then let's sing! There's no telling how long we'll be able to. Forney's cheerful voice snapped me back to reality. What are you talking about? The end will come. There's no escaping it. Obviously, I want to sing as much as I can until that time arrives. Forney, what's going to happen to you afterward? Huh? What do you mean by afterward? After I've left this apartment. 
Who knows? I don't think anything will change. Will you stay here? Maybe, maybe not. You're being awfully vague. Forney smiled again and responded lyrically. I, or I'll know when the time comes. But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. So if you liked it, hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye!